Why, thank you, Chris741. What's going on, guys? Joy Franz here at Flix Training Systems and the Twitch chat. And today, we are going to talk about some champion level qualities. And we are going to try to answer the question Are there some things that are not coachable? Right? Meaning, with all the positive mental manipulation that goes into building a good lifter, aside from the template and the training and putting them in a good environment and all these things, is it possible to take someone that has not faced adversity and, you know, really not much in their life and then may build them into someone that has that sort of champion mentality, right? Just that, just the ability to elevate themselves and those around them to have complete trust, confidence in themselves and their plan and, and get it done where it counts, right? What inspired this video, um, we had a lifter that I will not name that has been around for a little while. There's plenty of lifters that, that could go, like you could just slot them in to this description. They hit tremendous numbers in the gym, right? Tremendous numbers in the gym. How many lifters do you know that hit tremendous numbers in the gym? But when they show up on meet day, they just don't get it done. They go like, you know, four for nine or they just mess up. They Their weight sucks. There's just, just so many things that go wrong, right? But they put, but they're great IG lifters that just suck when it comes to, oh shit, there's another guy here that wants to take what's mine. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, I'm not really gonna pay attention to things. I'm gonna misgroup things. I'm not gonna get it done. You know what I mean? Why is that? Uh, like they have great training in the gym, right? Great training in the gym. They're putting up great numbers in the gym. Maybe sometimes it's on good competition equipment, but they're just the only difference is that they're just not getting it done consistently in meets, right? Um, I think there's a lot of different things that go into that. Um, I think some of it, there is a genetic component, but a lot of it has to do with your upbringing, uh, outside factors that, and how you interact with your environment, how do you overcome adversity, the struggles that you've gone through in your life. Um, you know, we got my, my scrap paper here. We're going to kind of just kind of go through it. I do believe that there's different levels to these traits. So you can have confidence. You can have some confidence. You can have a lot of confidence. You can have confidence to the point where you and your coach are on the same wavelength, right? You, you it, like you don't even need to. You don't even have a sliver of doubt of whether or not they're doing everything in their power to make sure that you are going to be 100% coach, 100% um, prepared to execute. Trust, trusting in yourself. Trusting in your coach, trusting in your program, trusting in your meat day, trusting in your cutting ability, trusting in your nutrition, trusting in your good recovery habits. Just having this, um, like, imagine you have this confidence, like, bro, my nutrition is is on point. It is going to be, I, I will bet my nutrition against my opponent anytime, right? I know that my nutrition is going to be on point. I know that I'm going to handle business and do the little things that are going to give me an edge in my execution that they are not willing to do. That is gonna empower you with a bit of confidence, right? You know, um, your plan, like, yo, this method is tried and true. I know this method works. I know most people aren't doing what I'm doing to get, you know, to, to, to follow this plan to, to the T and and training was immaculate and all these things. And like, if you've done, if you've done like 10 meets, if you've done 10 meets with the same coach and you've gone through the same process and you know that every time three weeks out, when you hit that big deadlift single, it translates into an even bigger single on meet day. And you hit a, you hit your biggest single yet three weeks out. You, you have so much confidence going in because you've done, you've done it, right? You've done it so many times. So you could predict based on the past, right? History can give us keys to the future right it gives you this level of confidence that's just like beyond right this 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 topic is like multifaceted there's like a lot of different things that go into it but yeah i'm just gonna go down the list and then i'm gonna rant so down here we have good technique repetition so you're gonna repeat that good technique and then positive reinforcement right so you find your good technique you're gonna repeat that and then you know your coach or your training or something is going to give you feedback as to okay i'm doing the right thing and i'm going to continue to try to perfect that thing and then you're going to do that to the point where it gets embedded into your identity right so meaning the training that you're doing the good technique that you've done it is now embedded into your identity 
I use Russ a lot of times as an example because I, I can say his name and you guys know who I'm talking about, right? Russ, um, even Amanda to an extent, Keiko, um, Mikey. There's a lot a lot of my high, you know higher level lifters. I'm, I'm getting there with Jesus. I don't think we're quite perfect there yet. We're getting there. Um, Isaac, uh, just I could keep going. I could literally keep going. Um, but you you fix your you you get the technique a certain way, right? Like with the rest of the squat, like moving his stance out, turning his feet out, and then getting him to build strength from the lowest point of the squat, so that way he knows to get that good stretch reflex. He needs to go all the way down, which is gonna one not only give him white lights in competition, but two build his squat from that position and give him a better reversal out of the hole. We've embedded that into his identity. Now, sometimes you can get knocked out of that. Like maybe you're just not paying attention one day. You stand up too too narrow. You have distractions. Um, maybe somebody shows up to the gym and you're mentally just kind of thrown out of it. I don't know, right? But you want to embed those good habits. Your tr like all these things above. You want to embed that into your identity, and then the outcome becomes. You have your flawless execution. It becomes second nature. So you know, like, how have, I how have I been able to never miss a bench? I know that when everything that I need to do to make sure that when I show up, I pick the right numbers, everything is cumulative, right? It all adds up so that they, so that come meet day, no matter where I'm at, no matter what state I'm in, no matter what country I'm in, no matter what I'm doing, I will be, I will always execute to the best of my ability um, and and that is going to give me 100% out of 100% on a particular lift, right? This whole process takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time. Um, for some people, they just kind of get it. Like, I say something and they just do it and they don't think about it. And then, like, we just get shit done. Um, when I worked with John Hack, he was a man of few words. Um, it was like he would just check in. I would say a couple things. But once it was good, we didn't talk about it. It was like, okay, we don't need to talk about this anymore. We're moving on now. Um, and I could throw him into the fire, no matter all, all the competitions we went to, no matter what we did, he just did it. Like he just, the, the mental side could not be broken. Like there was nothing, I, internally, maybe he was feeling it, but he never showed it. And whatever was in front of us, whatever, like literally I have been in scenarios where I call a number on the bar and it's like, if you get this lift, you will make $30,000 if you make this lift. If you don't make this lift, you're only going to get $10,000, right? Literally. I don't think any of you listening to this understand what that feels like. If you pull this lift right now, if you pull this lift right now, you will make $40,000 you $40, from this one lift. Do you imagine the pressure that goes into that? All the work that you're going to do. That's like six months of work for some people. Eight months, ten months of work for some people. That's more than what some people make in a year, right? I have gone through that. I, th I truly believe that that experience has empowered me to go on into whatever I do. And just, I mean, that and, of course, playing sports and all these things, it all adds up. And I can call numbers under, there's no, <laughs> there's no, there's no situation that's going to stress me more than that. You know what I mean? Now, going back to that scenario. Uh, and it, it ended up not working out in our favor, but I, I, I keep replaying it and I'm like, shit, did I put the right number on the bar? Did I do the right thing? And I was like, yep, I, I try, like, I would have made that decision nine times out of 10. The alternative that would have given me the desire, re desirable result, even though we would have probably succeeded if we had done that, I don't necessarily know if it was the right thing. And it, and it was, you know, probably one of the hardest calls in, now that I think about it, it's one of the hardest calls. I, you guys don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about. But just know there was a time, there was a lot of money on the line, and and uh, it was between first or second. Anyway, passion is huge. How uncomfortable are you willing to get? Everyone has a different limit. You might not even know it yet, right? Uh, so I'm going to get into that. So uh, I talked to this briefly. I talked about this briefly um, with Stream. But um, we had a drill in football where uh, I don't even think they would allow this drill anymore, but basically there's two sides and the coach throws the ball on the ground. And um, the goal is to just take the, get the ball, get the ball from the other person. Sometimes you're gonna get a good bounce 
and you're gonna just get away you're gonna get away from uh you know you're gonna get away from the other person but we had this like weird um it was like a time limit right so even though you have the ball the other person can still try to take it from you and usually what happens is people are diving on the ground you know trying to get it and you end up getting in the situation where you have two guys and both of them have like their, their hand their arms are on the ball and you got to fight to take that ball from the other person this becomes a battle of just how far are you willing to go what is your limit and in that moment you become uh, nothing matters but taking that ball away from the other person and it it literally it was like the world stopped and all that mattered in that moment was getting this ball away from that other person and I just remember giving it I gave my soul to that right and I don't even know if it was because I was stronger than the other person but I think that the person that was fighting me realized they weren't willing to go as far as I was so they just said all right like like I'm gonna, I'm gonna let up I'm getting like kind of scared right now right I was made a team captain like that day, like that night they made me a team captain. Um, I know it might be hard to imagine it in your head. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. But in powerlifting, there are going to be times when you are prepping for a big competition and you really want to win. You want to win so bad. You want to win so badly that you stay up late. Maybe you meal prep. You're making, you're tracking your food. You're making sure you're getting enough and you're, you're literally like controlling all those recovery variables that we always talk about. You make your, your technique is on point. You fly to the meet early, right? You hit your training days. You make sure that you rest. Those two days leading into the meet, you are resting. You are chilling, right? You are not doing anything but resting. You are making sure that everything is just, your sleep is good, no distractions. You turn your phone off. You go to sleep when you're supposed to. And you put everything into that, right? Now, some people, you know, they may not want to give that much up. I will tell you this. When you have someone that is in, like, they, they, they know they're going to place top five, and they really want to place high within that top five, you know, like let's say a nationals or a big state meet or whatever, they're going to do that. They're going to do that little extra step. Um, or maybe they're competing at a meet that can give you national records and you really want this record because you're going to age out of a division or something. Powerlifting gives us these like little things and goals that we can work on that set the bar um, until the next person comes and get it, right? But it's like, hey, I did this thing and it affects all of us, right? That record is now there, that record is now relevant. And it gives you just a bit of a bit of prestige and it's, you know, it means a lot to like work really, really hard for something, put everything into something and get it. Um, so when you have these lifters that they train really well, but they never get it done on the platform, maybe they train well because it's easy for them, but they're not willing to take care of all the other things outside the gym. You know come meet day to like secure you know to, to, to replicate what they've done or or things like that right everybody has a limit and you might not even know what your limit is um what it like what is what is your limit like all right i'm willing to track my food and train hard like three days out of the week and and you know the other days of the week i might skip a day or not do accessories or whatever you know what i mean like everyone has a different limit um i think if you want to get the most out of yourself obviously you got to follow the plan and there are going to be times, 1 million percent, where you don't want to. You literally don't want to. I never want to squat in my garage. It is not fun squatting in the garage. There's nobody around. It's just me and Tina. It's cold now. The ground isn't even. It's just pain. It's just You just got to go in there. And it's like there's there's nothing to kind of like amp. There are no, there's nothing outside of me to amp me up. I just got to do it myself, right? It's not necessarily the most fun thing. But I do it every single Tuesday every single tuesday right i do it i do it because i know that this is what i want even if it's not something that i feel like doing right and i think if you can string together productive days when you f don't feel like doing it more so than others you're gonna you're gonna get ahead um you know so at the bottom here my take on strain from competition i wanted to touch on this really quickly so um competing is stressful right like i said everybody has a limit and in order to compete you are literally competing against another person you're competing against another individual and you'll have a number next to your name at the end of the meet right and that number will determine your total your placement whatever that stress uh i i understand is not desirable for most people i would say they they don't enjoy the competition it's not the funnest part i mean yeah it is fun to compete but at the same time there's a lot of emotions there. You feel a lot of stress. You feel things that 
you don't i know some people they avoid it they just don't want it right but i would argue and this is my take you know the way i look at it is this is what kind of makes you feel like you're alive right you have these feelings you have this like yo i want something and someone's gonna try to come take it from me so i need to like leave it all out there right that's like invigorating that's like why do we why do we live right i always i always uh i, I said this after one of my nationals recaps i don't know what year it was but it's like in those moments where you put it all on the third deadlift and it's like a little bit over like yeah it's probably gonna be an overshoot but i think my lifter can do it i just don't know if they're gonna execute and everything comes down to one moment it comes down to one lift right in that moment i there's like very few things that make me as a coach feel more alive than in that moment or and then right after they get it and everybody goes nuts right dude let me tell you guys when russ missed his first two squats at nationals the pressure to get that third one in there the pressure was nuts it was insane and then the sigh of relief after i saw the two to one i was like oh my god oh my god you know what i mean that was that was um i'll never forget that i'll never forget there's plenty of moments in powerlifting where and i'm not even lifting i'm just i'm just coaching right that's how you know i'm passionate about this shit um there's there's many moments in my powerlifting career where I have I have put a weight on the bar that would require my athlete to elevate to that moment. You need to elevate to the occasion. You need to rise to the occasion. All the I am going to literally I am going to I am going to drop an immense amount of pressure on you. Right? Amount of figurative weight on you. And now it's out of my hands. It's all on you. And 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 I that that that, that, that just makes me like I'm fucking stuttering right now. Like it makes me like you live for those moments. Like, yo, John Hack, you pull this third deadlift, you win the world title, and you change the course of raw powerlifting, basically, right? That was the most viewed event at the moment. Um, with Russ at this last world, I knew he won on the second, so it was like weird. Because I had a lot of silent emotion because I didn't want him to 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 be worried. Um or, or, or feel anything. I just wanted him to focus. But like for me as a coach, it's like it's like yo, you get this and it's all comes down to one moment and those are the those that's what you live for, right? And it takes a special type of lifter, Jesse Norris, Russell Orhe, John Hack. Um I'm trying to think. Mikey, Mikey for sure showed this at his last meet. With Keiko, uh it's weird. Like our first couple years we were behind, so we didn't have we weren't in a position to win. And then this last one, he just like won by so much like he dominated um so we never really had i never really had to say keiko you have to pull this man you get this it's over i never really had to do that it was just like yo man we're so far ahead we just gotta do our thing and our, your strength will do his thing um but i do believe keiko has that in him but yeah those guys like when you when you just put it all in your lifter and it's up to them um i don't know if you could coach that I don't know if you could coach that because I could think of some lifters that I have. I've said, yo, you get this and you win. And it's like they didn't even try or they just like they just brain fart or they don't even grind the weight. They just like attempt it and like they feel it. They feel the strain and give up. Right. Um, maybe it can come in time. I'm trying to think of an example of someone that didn't get it right um and then they fixed it I don't, I don't know to that extent you guys know like when you fight somebody like they hit a squat and they grind and then some people like oh this is hard and they just go down or or they try a squat on their second and they fail it like not even close and then they do it again on their third and they grind 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 and then they get it it's like why does that happen like what is it in your brain that made you just kind of turn off there right i don't know if you can coach that i don't know if you can coach I think I, I I think I've definitely empowered people and given them an, enough confidence to go from like super low confidence to really high confidence, and they can reach that point, you know, where that flawless, perfect meet day execution, that just iron mentality is instilled into them. But I do think it takes years and years and years to make it to the level of, um, 
you know, like uh, if you guys think about, you can use Taylor Atwood for an example. I'm going to reference him to Tom Brady where Tom Brady has won six Super Bowls. Taylor has won around that many nationals. And I think, and he and he's done this with people on him, on his ass, and people just like, he was a blowout, there's no way. There's no way he was losing. Um, but he's done it under multiple circumstances in different countries. Um, and he's just done it over and over and over. And I think you get to this point where there's not really anything outside of, there's not really anything that's gonna break you, break you mentally, right? Um, so it's very difficult to coach that into people. I think there has to be some sort of a, uh, just like a environmental, dis like you were exposed to something growing up that kind of made you that way. Or um, maybe it's just kind of within you, in your lineage or something like that, right? Um, and, and through coaching and repetition and going through those stressful moments and having immense pressure on you, um, you know, you can feel that and then you just become that you have like such an iron will that nothing is ever going to break you from nothing's ever going to prevent you from imposing your will upon that bar and like, you know, showing those that showing everybody like, yo, this is the number that I have. And like, I really hope that everybody listening to this, whether it's a local level, whether it's a regional level, whether it's a national level that you collegiate level, even that you experience you know what it's like to put it all on one lift or to have competition or to just really desire just really have the desire to hit a pr or win and feel what it's like to to have that pay off um, but i do think that everyone can tolerate a certain level of stress and not everyone is built for stress not everyone is 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 just you know right out the gate built for um you know incredibly high situations where your life the course of your life could potentially be changed and there's very few people people that are going to be in that situation right um there's very very few people that are going to be up there like that so uh, that will have an opportunity to just like win a matchup that they can capitalize on and it can like literally change the trajectory of their life um but yeah i mean i i'll never give up on someone i'll always try to get them there uh, but I just think some people are going to be more malleable and be able to get there um, faster than others. Um, some may never get there, um, but you can always try. And I would like to think from my camp, at least, like I'm, I'm talking about looking at outside in, like other people, I don't know how they do their coaching and stuff. But from my people, I can't really say that I've been in a situation where you know, yo, we need to get this to win, and they just give up. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with if I put you on a team of winners. If you're on a team and you're like, wow, I have like all these people that I look up to around me, it's gonna, you're more likely to follow, fall in that, you know, camp or, or that situation than uh, than others. So it's one of the benefits of being, you know, you're not doing this alone, right? You have people around you that have been through it, so it kind of gives you that sense of, you know, everything's gonna be okay. I'm gonna make it. But anyway. What do you guys think? Do you guys think that you can teach someone to, I mean, if you haven't experienced it, it's very hard to give input. Um, but do you think that you can teach someone to just be fearless like that? Or is it something that you just gotta have? Um, is that something you're interested in? Are you interested in even, do you even like the strain of competition? Let's just do that. Do you guys like the strain of competition? Do you like competing? Do you like the stress of it? I am addicted to it as a coach. I'm addicted to it. Um, that's why this COVID thing is just like ruining my life. <laughs> um, but yeah, guys, thank you so much for making it this far. Uh, hashtag get the job done. Hashtag get the job done. The comments down below. Um, hope you enjoyed my rant and I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.